Hey, you're jacked into the franchise. Uh, welcome. I'll, I'll be the C train today because we're covering fish movies. All right. Two fish movies. Probably two of the best. If you're going to rank fish movies. Jaws. Yeah, that's probably number one with a bullet, isn't it? But are sharks mammals? Yes. There you go. So it's not a fish movie. It's a mammal movie. You know, my girlfriend tried to get me on this. I I, I said we were going to be watching fish movies. And she, she said, Free Willy is a good fish franchise we could cover. I said, no, that's a mammal franchise. Yep. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. All right. I, hey, that's Logan Adair over there. He's got his video camera on today. I'm looking at him. We have similar glasses and we both have mustaches. Oh, and he has very hairy arms. <laughs> oh, sorry. I guess I shouldn't do so many uh, visual bits. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You should probably talk to me, dude. Did you say my name? I was going to say a, a line. All right, t- give me the line. We'll say my name. I said it already. Logan Adair. Just keep podcasting more like. Instead of swimming. Yeah. Right, right. Now, that's something her parents used to say to her, as we found out in Finding Dory. I'm so glad I learned, because when I watched Nemo, I was like, "Where? how do you somebody learn that line? How I do you come up with something that cool? I know. It's like it's like how every time I watch um, The Empire Strikes Back, I'm like, God damn it. I've, oh, I, I gotta see that Kessel Run. Yeah. Show right. me the Kessel Run. How did Han learn his name? Exactly. Solo, where's that come from? Well, I always assumed it was an Ellis Island situation, but I'm glad I got that confirmed finally. Right. Yeah. All right. So it's Finding Nemo, Finding Dory Day here on the podcast. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Finding Nemo. Now, Logan, you were like five years old when this came out. Maybe not even yet. Four years old. Turning five in a couple months. Turning five in a couple months. Looking forward to that birthday. What were you getting? What were you looking for for that birthday? I don't remember. I was five years old. But I do remember watching this movie in the theater. And I remember being a wreck when the when the mom died. I remember being scared when Darla showed up. Lots of When great- Darla showed up? You're not scared of the sharks? You're scared of the little girl with braces? I was five years old. She was terrifying to me. <laughs> she was so scary. No, I today, guess- she's still scary. I guess I get that. I remember when I was 10 years old and I watched uh, Toy Story for the first time. I thought that the kid next door, Sid, was kind of disturbing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. All right. Well, this is another Pixar. Let's get into it. Um, Andrew Stanton. You like this guy? Yeah, he's all right. All right. He's he's part of the original Pixar brain trust. You know, he's the only only the second animator they ever hired at the company. Yeah, who was number one? John Lasseter. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Hawaiian shirt himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, Stanton was involved with a lot of those early movies. He wrote, co wrote Toy Stories 1 and 2. All right. Co wrote Bugs Life. He has like a story, or I think he co directed Bugs Life even. I might yeah, be wrong. Yeah, I think that. so. Yeah, and then he uh, he has a writing credit on that Monsters Inc. as well. That's a good one. It's a great movie. Yeah, I, I haven't you know I haven't seen that since theaters. Well, you're missing out. I know. Bro. I should. I, we should cover it. I've never seen that Monsters College. You never saw it? No. Tim says that's better than the first one. I disagree, but it's a good movie. It's better than Dory. Uh, well, hey, don't spoilers for your opinions on Dory. I'm just saying more spoilers for my opinion on the other one. All right, whatever. Uh, so Andrew Stanton, this is his debut film as a sole writer director. He's the real brains behind this Nemo picture. He's not the sole director, though. Yeah, he is. Uncritch? Doesn't Uncritch do this one with him? I don't believe so. Lee Uncritch? Is that true? I thought it was, yeah. Interesting. Well, I, I, how do I check that? <laughs> Go to IMDb. You look up <laughs> yeah, yeah. Andrew, or you look up Finding Nemo, right? That'd be the first yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. Now, Unkrich is the fellow who did Toy Story 3, right? Right. 
He did that oh, one right. solo. He, he did he did three solo, but he's done like a lot of co-directing. All these people do lots of co-directing. You're right. Except dude. Bird. He's he's there. Yeah, yeah Bird. Because Bird came later. He'd already done like uh, Iron Giant. Yeah, that's shit. why they got like, him. So he's like, I don't work with you motherfuckers. I'm not part of the brain trust. I'm an artist. He is my favorite one. Yeah, he and Stanton and Doctor, right? Those are the three biggies. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, this movie, Logan, came out May 30th, 2003. 20 years ago today. Today, the day we're recording. You got to get this episode up Shout out to me for scheduling. Today. Yeah, great job, Logan. You got you to gotta edit this today. Make sure it's up. No problem. All right. You know, we don't want to miss that great anniversary by one So if day. you're listening on a day that's not May 30th, it's your fault, not mine. Correct. I'm just saying that. Yeah, I agree. Um, now, this was uh, a big hit at the box office. People loved Finding Nemo. It, they had $94 million to make it. Michael Eisner, who was the head of Disney at the time, he, he was the guy who said Toy Story was going to fail. He again comes out, even though Pixar at this point has a track record. He's like, no one's going to see this fucking fish movie. I can't believe I'm spending all this money. Boom. It makes $940.3 million at the box office. It's the number two movie of the whole year. Wow. All right. Beating Disney, the one they thought was going to be number one, which was number three for the year, Pirates of the Caribbean, The mm -hmm. Curse of the Black Pearl. They both, unfortunately, got beat by uh, Lord of the Rings 3. Right. The Return of the King. What about Everyone... the Matrix sequels? I just watched no, that, that one. Those, those were disappointments. Mm. Uh, but Lord of the Rings, everyone everyone had to know how it ended. Are they going to drop it into the volcano? Is that going to happen? Right. Are they going to get back to the... the Shire. That's the word I was looking for. Shire. Shire LaBeouf, am I right? Mm. Put him in one of those movies. Yeah. That's barely a joke. Okay. Um, so, can we go through the awards? It was, it was uh, yes. a lot of award attention on Nemo. The Oscars. The Oscars nominated Finding Nemo for four awards. Okay. It, best original screenplay. It lost it to Lost in Translation because that movie was like Japanese people. They're kooky. And the Oscars were like, ha, 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 ha. Never saw it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Then sound editing, it lost to Master and Commander colon the far side of the world. All right. Now that's one I want to reboot. Mm-hmm. Now that Crow, he's back in the public consciousness, the Pope's exorcist. We got to do a master and commander. Come on, it's even got a colon. What's on the other side of that colon next? I got to know. Yeah. Reboot right. or sequelize? I want sequel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did I say reboot? I think so. I meant sequel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Score. It lost to uh, Howard Shore for Lord of the Rings 3. and uh, But it won Best Animated Feature at the Oscars. Uh, over at the BAFTAs, they nominated it for screenplay, but it lost that to the station agent, Tom McCarthy's film. Uh, that's got the dink in it. Right. Uh, Golden Globes, it lost Best Comedy to Lost in Translation because... Japanese people are so fucking funny, dude. They do karaoke, all right? And they look different from us, and they eat very weird foods on the street. Mm -hmm. All right, all right? All those things are true. And then the Saturn Awards, it won Best Animated Feature, and uh, it lost music to and writing to Lord of the Rings. But how about this? Remember I told you, like, the Saturn Awards, they're, like, the only award shows that consistently give out, like, acting awards to motion capture performances. Like, 
I think Andy Circus won for Rise of the Planet of the Apes or something. Sure. How about this? Ellen DeGeneres won Best Supporting Actress for her vocal performance in this movie. All right. That's wild. Yep. All right. Kids' Choice Awards loved it. They gave Ellen Best Voice. They gave the movie Best Movie. Unfortunately, they lost in one category, Logan. Best Fart of the Year. Mm. Now, of course, those Pelicans were nominated. I can see why they didn't win, because it's not a real fart. They yeah, just the thought... Enough. Yeah, they Big thought fart. somebody farted. But I'll tell you what, Kangaroo Jack, that was the winner. Have you seen that movie? A long time ago, yeah. Do you remember any great farts in it? No, not really. I remember one time where the they feed the kangaroo a pepper, and he was all freaking out because he ate a hot pepper. He might have farted at some point in that scene. Maybe. Hey, um, did Grown Ups 2 win for their con <laughs> snart or whatever it was? I you don't remember know. That? It was like a cough sneeze fart. Oh, they yeah, I, I do kind of remember that. I hope they yeah. won. To complete to compete with a shark. Right. Uh, so if a listener out there really knows the movie Kangaroo Jack well, can you please send me a clip or, or perhaps just describe it? I want to know what fart beat Finding Nemo. All yeah. right. What if it was just Jerry O'Connell? Just a Jerry O'Connell. Fight. <laughs> I think that would be great. Jerry, I could picture Jerry Two O'Connell. Two scream actors, right? Anthony Anderson, Jerry fart. O'Connell. I guess they got Anthony Anderson pre before he was in scream. Right, though. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think Kangaroo Jack's wearing that uh, <laughs> that fraternity necklace? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh man. Uh, all right, the MTV Awards. I want my MTV. <laughs> Thanks, I forgot about that. Uh, and I got to see it live. All right, uh, Ellen, she was nominated for Best Comedic Performance, uh, and she lost to Jack Black in School of Rock. Oh, that, well, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was nominated for Best Movie, lost to... Uh, you Lord know who should have the- won Supporting Actress? Joan oh. Cusack for School of Rock. Yeah, man. You're that doesn't wrong. make any sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lord of the Rings won Best Movie at the MTV Awards. Uh, even MTV was given that movie awards. Isn't that crazy? It's huge like, The deal. MTV audience was that into Lord of the Rings? Yeah. I, su- I saw Pirates was also nominated. I would think that's the MTV winner for Best Movie. Or Matrix. They seem like pretty edgy, right? Yeah, but see, everyone was disappointed by those sequels, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I went back and, and Matrix won that year. Like the original. Oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah, it might Or have. Fight Club. Fight Club. That's true. I'm t- well, I think Fight Club kind of caught on later. Mm. I remember seeing that in theaters. Like People weren't that into it. It got kind of mixed reviews. It became a classic a couple of years later. Um, all right, so I'm ready to talk about finding nemo are you yeah yeah so it starts off like every other uh disney movie by completely traumatizing every kid watching it um the it's marlin and coral right yes that's right they should have gotten coral from the challenge to do the voice of coral i thought you're gonna say coral from the walking dead there's a coral in the coral right that's funny Mm mm-hmm uh i'm so glad to be on the other side of the zombies i kind of miss them you miss the zombies bub but <laughs> just bub okay just that's bub. Fair. you should watch uh one of those weird dawn of the dead fake remakes or the tv probably have show bub sci-fi at some point right i you know what they there was made a, one <laughs> not to go back to dawn of the to, to the dead movies too hard but there was a comic book i remember at some point that showed you like what bub's life was like when he was a human <laughs> i don't want to know pre life i want to i just want to follow bub That's what well you gotta this is gotta this go is the only thing that exists no we go backwards a bub prequel all right yeah all right so they're in their new neighborhood marlin and carl they're they found an anemone to live in, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then they go outside. Oh, my God. 
No, where did everyone go? I'll tell you where everyone went. They're hiding from a really scary fish. Very scary. Very long, sharp teeth. I wouldn't want to mess with them. I wouldn't either. Uh, And they don't either, but see, he's going after their eggs. How many eggs did they say they had? So many. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, So great touch that he's like, I want to name them all Marlin and we can like half Marlin, half Coral. She's like one Nemo. And then that's the one. It's It's just great. That's a great touch. It's great writing. Honestly, I gotta say, for some of this movie, I was thinking, and I'm still kind of on the fence. Like, this is kind of a five. Like, I might give it a four. I'm between a four and a five. But, like, it is great. It's great, but I definitely have problems with it. It feels a little video gamey. Yeah, I know what you mean, because it's just sort of like a series of calamities. Right, but what else would you do? It's just, you're going across the ocean to find your son, you would you would run into these certain things, you know? It, make, it know. makes sense, but but also it's a little bit of a problem. Not really, but if you're going to, we have to nitpick the movie, and that's but one I, of the problem. But I think the character work here is so goddamn good. I think so many of the vocal performances work really well. I think that... Up to this point, it was the most beautiful Pixar movie. Yeah. Only to be topped, I think, by Andrew Stanton in Wall-E. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. You think even still? I think Wall-E is their best movie. They haven't topped Wall-E. All right. I mean, I, I, that's not my favorite one, but that's fine. But, but best looking. You think, you think Wall-E is still the best looking one? I haven't watched it in a long time, but... Incredibles 2 looked pretty awesome. That, yeah, I think that might be the best looking one. Incredibles too. Incredibles too. Bird that, baby. That's a wild opinion. Yeah, well, I'm a wild guy, bro. <laughs> you are, dude. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so they, you know, the fish kills the mom and Soul knocks. looks cool. Remember Soul? Oh yeah, that did look good. You're right. How about that? I'm looking forward to that new Elemental. Oh, that looks so cool. I yeah. saw the trailer when I saw Guardians. And yeah, me too. That looks so good. It's like Inside Out, but with elements. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. I like when they do that. Soul, Inside Out, this one. It all feels like a, a piece of the Pixar ongoing philosophy. Yep. Yeah, Pixar's great, man. Yeah, Pixar you know, is good. DreamWorks, DreamWorks is, bad. is bad. Yeah, get it right or Dan will be mad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's me, Dan. Um, so uh, what happens? They they save one egg. The mom dies. Marlin and Nemo. That's the family now. And uh, Marlin, Albert Brooks. All right. You know, I read... That originally they they you know how Shrek they like recorded the whole thing with like Chris Farley yeah and then they recorded the whole thing with Mike Myers and then he was like let me do it again but Scottish <laughs> yes uh, in this one they recorded Marlin with Willem Dafoe wow I never yeah. knew that he was Willem I mean Willem Dafoe was Marlin and then they were like that's horrible he, it's so Dafoey they were like we need him to be like sweeter or something <laughs> so uh so they recast them they got albert brooks which is like kind of an achievement in and of itself because albert brooks doesn't work that much he's amazing though he's amazing role, I mean. like i saw ellen got nominated for all those awards for voicing dory i mean she's good but she's just doing ellen she can't really do the emotion yeah yeah you're right i know which is the problem when the next movie, when it's like Ellen and <laughs> do the emotion. Yeah, it's Ellen the movie. Yep. Uh, but uh, Albert Brooks, I mean, he's one of the best actors and filmmakers in comedy ever. And he can do emotion because his comedies were all about emotion. Defending your life and fucking real life. Those are the only two with life in the title, but uh, those are the ones I thought of. Lost uh, in maybe, America. That's Lost in America. That's a great one. Yeah. Okay, um, what, are, what what next, Logan? It's the first day of school. Wake up. Five more minutes, right? He wants five more minutes of sleep. Yeah. And then, and then Dab wants five more minutes of sleep. You know, I'd forgotten that Nemo's got that crippled fin. Yeah, you forgot that? 
Yeah. That that's another I mean the dad is like really overprotective. That's a big part of the story. But I forgot that part of that. I mean cuz I remembered that like the mom and all the other eggs died or whatever. So like that's a reason to be overprotective. But also like Nemo can't swim as fast as other fish. He's got a little a little cripple fin. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be protective of him. Don't know don't know what's going to happen. I like when he meets Willem Willem Dafoe, the character Willem Dafoe, actually played later in the movie. And Willem Dafoe's like, never stopped me. And he's got a crippled fin, too. Mm -hmm. Should I be using the word crippled so much? I think you've already done it. I I think you could do it for fish, right? I'm not not referring to, like, a guy in a wheelchair. They show Dory at one point, by the way. She has, like, she has stuff on on her side. Do you remember that? No. Marlon's looking at her, and he notices she has, like, marks on her side. Was he checking out her ass? No, that's not what happened. And okay. then at the end of the movie, I w- went back to before in the movie and was looking at if those marks showed up and they were not there. So I don't know what that was all about. And that's not even a plot in Finding Dory or anything. I don't know. That I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, then keep going. Okay. Continue. All right. So the first day of school, they've got uh, a teacher named Mr. Ray, and he's a stingray, isn't he? Mm-hmm. I love stingrays, by the way. Maybe that's my next tattoo. But uh, this guy, he's a good time, right? He's singing all the time. <laughs> oh, it's the first day of school. It's the first day of school. Yeah, he's always singing. Yeah. I like, you know, I'm such a baby sometimes with, with these movies because, like, I laughed at a lot of stuff that was just, like, goofy sounds. Like, in Dory, anytime, like, they were doing that whale voice, it made me laugh. Yeah. By the way, did you know this guy had a co-writing credit on the movie? The Stingray? Mr. Ray. His name's Bob Peterson. You know Bob Peterson? Yeah. He does a lot of other voice acting stuff. He was Roz in Monsters, Inc. Roz? You know her? No. She's like, you forgot to finish your paperwork. Remember her? I guess so. Mike Wazowski. You remember her? Yeah. I'm saying that, that but not really. But um, he's... uh, I guess he's the dog and up, I see. Oh, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. He's in Cars. I'm looking him up now. Is that all he does? He's just a voice actor? And he co-wrote this movie. Wow. I co-directed Up. Oh, wow. How about that? Pretty cool. This guy, he's like a secret weapon on the uh, the, the Pixar staff. I'll tell you what, he's also got screenplay credit on Up and screenplay credit on Cars 3. Wow. All right. And he wrote 10 episodes of Forky Asks a Question. Or maybe just one. He's like a producer on it. Um, Okay. okay. Uh, Tell me more. Like, does he have a car? No, they're underwater, silly. Oh, right, right. Come on. You you wouldn't be able to drive. (laughs) Uh, but they do in SpongeBob. You know that? He, SpongeBob's always trying to get his license. I knew you'd bring up fucking SpongeBob. How'd you know only, that? Because it's the only other animated thing that's underwater. I wasn't and, going to until you just brought up driving. No, I listen. I swear to God, I was never going to bring up SpongeBob. Until I you knew just did. it would come up. I knew it would come up. Your fault. It is my fault, I guess, ultimately. It was a self fulfilling prophecy. Mm-hmm. But while I was watching the movie, I was I was thinking like Oh, they live in an anemone. He lives in a pineapple. I was I was doing comparisons, <laughs> but I don't know anything about Fire Nemo, and I still don't understand whether it takes place in the ocean or a bathtub. What do you mean? It's the ocean. But why? Sometimes is he they a, climb up out of the ocean. But he's a sponge. But he. But there are other. There are like crabs and shit also, and a squirrel. There's a squirrel that wears a tank. But over- why would that be in the ocean? She wears a tank over her head that has air in it, so she's not breathing in the water. Oh. And she also lives inside of a little uh, dome, like from under the dome. She lives in one of those. <laughs> like from under the dome. <laughs> she lives in one of those. <laughs> oh, pr- I'll send you a pic after. Dude, it's tough to live under those domes. They like bisect a moose or something. Didn't that happen in the first episode of that show? Uh, Maybe. May- that kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like the one episode I saw. 
I watched the whole first season, and then like two or three episodes into the second season, I was like, I can't fucking do this anymore. All right, we're done with Under the Dome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so they're on a field trip. Is that what's right? And yeah, and like Marlon that. follows them along because he's like worried about Nemo. And Nemo's like, Dad, what the fuck? He doesn't say that because he's a real sweet guy. Um, Nemo, who does this voice? Who's this kid? I uh, I don't know. Jonathan Lipnicki. He's, it's not. It's not. It's not anyone I've heard of. But he's a cute kid. It's a new one for the next movie. I know that. Yeah. Well, you'd have to, right? Because he's got to sound like a kid still. Right. This it's kid's voice nice probably dropped. Yeah, it sounds just like the original. Yeah. But uh, I read that uh, the Turtles kid. Mm, I knew you were going to bring this up. Was Brad Bird's kid. Yep. How about that? Yep. Brad Turtle. All right. <laughs> but he also... <laughs> I don't have a problem with this because he's like a little... And he, I think Squirt is really cute. I think the voice is really good also. But then I noticed he brings him back for The Incredibles 2. 15 years later, he brings back his son to voice like a version of Jack-Jack, which I thought was weird because his kid's like... His kid's older than me, which is so it's like, why would you put that guy in the movie to voice Jack-Jack? That, that kind of annoyed me a little bit. He's but, a Nepo turtle. Yeah, he is. But yeah. what are you going to do? I guess. All right. So what? It's scuba divers. Yeah, that they're the big antagonists to this film. Now, I think it's Darla. I, what? I think Darla's the antagonist. Well, oh yeah, I thought you meant one of the scuba divers is Dar- Darla. I was gonna be blown away. No. All right, no. Should it's... I edit this movie where every time we see Darla, it's Darla from Buffy? <laughs> like every time Darla opens the door to walk into the dentist office, it's just Darla from Buffy opening a door. Listen, that would be a complete waste of time because only I would be amused by it. But <laughs> you, you, you absolutely should do that. I think I would be amused too, though. Yeah, I would get enjoyment. But ju- maybe just one time when you see her, it's Darla from the Little Rascals. Okay, I'm not really that familiar, but I'll do <laughs> okay. that for you. Thank you. All right. Um, now. They're coming from a boat, but the fish, the little baby fish, all think it's a butt. A butt. He That's touched the funny. butt. I liked it. Yeah, of course. It's great. That's a good butt joke. I, w- I would argue, even without having seen Kangaroo Jack, that's a better joke than the fart in that movie. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the best butt jokes there's ever been. I agree. They think a boat is called a butt. He touched the butt. It's a big butt. It's very funny. <laughs> Like yeah it. yeah so uh they capture nemo yeah i kind of want to bring something up there they sort of like the scuba diver shows up and the fish react to the scuba diver when it comes into our frame but they're in the open ocean right shouldn't they see the divers from forever ago but they're tiny dude so their field of vision might be quite narrow I don't know if that made sense, but okay. I I have a good. I I'm able to make sense of things for myself. I have a, I have that ability. This isn't an actual problem I had, but when we make the podcast, I like to bring up little. No, no, I I, I know it makes sense, but like I I've, I've been thinking about this about myself lately, Logan. It's like people on the internet are all about poking holes and things, right? Yeah, and I'm all about. Plugging them holes. Plugging them. Yeah, I really right. am. Like, I like that. I I can justify almost anything. That's if why I, you love law. If I you don't want need to explain to, to you, you exactly. just do it yourself. <laughs> it's true. All right. If I want to enjoy something, I can make it all make sense. Okay. So you just never tried with Lord of the Rings, because that was your complaint. You're like, it doesn't make sense. But it's, so it now you're saying you can, if you want to, make things make sense. You just didn't That's want right. to try. That's right. All right. That's correct. All right. Like this fella, Andrew Stanton later directed that John Carter movie. And people had a lot of problems with that movie. I think it's cool. Right. Okay. Yeah. Andrew Stanton directed that. That's what I'm saying. That's cool. I'm, yeah. I was asking a question. Oh, yes. He did. That, that's right. I didn't know that. That was his. Remember, all the Pixar guys were like, let me try anim- uh, live action for a second. No, I don't remember that. You know, Brad Bird, he did Ghost he was doing Protocol. Before, no, he wasn't. What? 
I mean, he did. Did he not do live action before they got him for The Incredibles? No, he did he Iron from Giant. Iron Giant to The Incredibles. Yes. Oh, then he went off and made like Tomorrowland and Mission Impossible. Yeah, and didn't Pete Doctor try um live action too? Yeah, I don't know. Mm, what was it? He did. I'm looking it up right now. I'm sure I'm right about this. I'm gonna guess Southpaw. I'm gonna guess Pete Doctor made Southpaw. <laughs> no, it wasn't Pete Doctor. Who Who am I thinking of? This is going to drive me insane. Dan Scanlon? He's a guy. It's not him. Who are the other people? Unkrich. What about Unkrich? What did he do? <laughs> oh, no. This is going to drive me crazy. I don't know. Who are the Pixar guys? We named them. Dr. Lassiter, this guy, Unkrich, Dan Scanlon, Brad Bird. Pixar directors. I just Googled this. Well, now they've brought in a bunch of new ones for like Luca and like, I think there's like a bunch of new people. I know. Oh my God. Who made You're right. Angus, whatever. He also has a co credit on um, Fighting oh, Dory. Me. Right, McLean. Pixar. Angus T. Jones. Pixar directors ranked. Let's see. Ooh, I'm interested. Brad Bird, number one. I'll tell you is number one on the list. This is by IMDb scores. Number one's Lee Unkrich. Number one is Lee Unkrich? Yeah, from Toy Story 3, Coco. All but right. everything, it's hard because all these people co-direct. That's why I like Bird because he does it himself, right? Yeah, well, yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. Bird. Bird is who I was thinking of because he did Tomorrowland. Right. I said that. You did? Yeah. So I went through all of this for nothing just because I wasn't paying attention to you? Yes, I said that five minutes ago. Oh, my God. I hate myself so much. Um, All right. So Nemo's gone. Marlon's distressed. He's running around. Well, like, swimming. swimming around. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he doesn't know what to do. He's following that butt. And uh, then he runs into Dory. And Dory's a... Uh, you know, I've never loved the character design of Dory. Why not? Uh, it's weird. It's That's the last weird. thing I'm going to complain about is what the fish look like. <laughs> I All just the fish think, look like, great. the clown fish look Every really time I like... see one of those fish, I'm like, oh, Dory. Oh, I guess you're right. Well, you do that anytime. Like... I remember, like, uh, I took my nieces to the aquarium, and we saw a clownfish, and both of them were like, Nemo! Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. That's what you do. So now. what's your beef? I don't understand. I just, it's not an iconic enough character. Not to... iconic enough. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely iconic enough. Is it? Remember on the Ellen show, she was like, let's make it where I can make Finding Dory. She was, like, campaigning forever to make Finding Dory, and then she Is that did. true? And it was a huge... I don't know. I feel like it was. I feel like she campaigned really hard for it. And, oh then, my the, God. and then we, as Americans, were like, yes, we want more Dory. I feel like you're underestimating the power of Dory, to be honest. I think I am, too. I, I think it's just because, like, Ellen, she's fallen so out of favor. And I got to say, I, I was an Ellen fan at some point. Like, I liked her HBO comedy special. I liked, I watched every episode of her first sitcom. All right. Not her second one so much. But when she came I, out, you were done. No, 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 no. She came out in the middle of the first one. Right. So the second one, you were like, I'm no longer watching because she's gay now. <laughs> no, but I watched the last couple seasons when she was gay on the original. I oh, think okay. I just watched the pilot of the second one and it wasn't very good. So I didn't watch it. All right. But it only I got canceled after like one. You ever watch her talk show? Yeah. No. That? And that that's the thing. I've wa I've seen clips from the talk show and every time it like, I don't know. It makes it's cringy to me. Yeah, and you could tell, especially going back now, watching like people point out, they're like, you can tell this guest looks awkward on the Ellen Show, and it's like a clip, and it's like, yeah, she, a lot of people seem very awkward on the Ellen Show for some reason. I don't know why. I know, but her reputation for so long was as the nicest lady in Hollywood, always dancing, the, right? She always yeah, dancing and, the, in the crowd. and then it turned out she was a real piece of shit. So like Ellen. Her rep with me, I mean, I, I don't think about it too much on a macro level, but like for me, like for the last 20 years, all I've seen her in is like clips of her dancing like an idiot. And when she was on American Idol and she was like the worst judge in American Idol history. For what? A whole season? Yeah, because she doesn't know 
anything about music. She did a whole season on American Idol? At least one. Maybe I didn't two. Know that. Well, do you know what season? Was, I remember they would have like special guests, but I don't remember her. No, no, no. Old. She was a straight up judge, dude. It was like Simon Cowell, Randy Jackson, Paula Abdul, Ellen. Oh my god, I don't remember this era of American Idol. Yeah, dude. I was watching. I watched more than you did, so I definitely saw it though. And you don't remember this? I don't remember that. I remember there was another girl that was. I remember the only season. word she knew about singing was pitchy. So sometimes she would say that a lot. <laughs> pitchy, a little pitchy. But uh, but other than that, everything was great. Yeah, I don't remember this. All right, hang on. I'm Googling Ellen DeGeneres, American Idol. Uh, she was on season seven. That's Pretty the David early. Cook season. Ellen DeGeneres was the was a judge for the entire David Cook season. Yes. <laughs> I've been Mandela affected. I didn't know about this. Wait. Hang on. You might wrong? not be right about this. Oh, oh man. Might not be right about Was this. Nicole Scherzinger a judge for a season? She it was in season seven. Wait, wait, okay. Not, she not was not a guest good. judge on season seven, but she was full judge season nine. Okay, what's that? Uh who won that season? Phillips. I want to say lead the wise. Yeah, I'm right about that. <laughs> okay. Right. Runner-up, Crystal Bower Socks. You remember her? Of course. She was cool. Yeah. She I, looked I, like she kind of maybe would smell. But I like, knew you were going to say that. I'll be honest. I knew you were, that you were going to say it. Maybe you like, have said that in before. In a good way. Maybe you said that before. But I, kn- I knew that you were about to say that. I remember that. I remember Lead the Wise singing a good rendition of Hallelujah. You like that song? I love that song, but I'm sure I didn't like the Lead the Wise I was into it. it. I, I liked it. I had it recorded on my DVR. I would like go back and watch it. Oh my god, dude! Like after he won, I was like, "Gotta check." Let me, let me, let me check out the Hallelujah again. Let me watch. Maybe it. I ought to listen to some Jeff Buckley or even some Leonard Cohen. No, I've heard them now, but all right, I mean, at the right. time I had too. But I, I liked it. American Idol was fun for me. I enjoyed it. All right, so that's why Ellen. You know, I don't really enjoy it anymore. Yeah. That that took a little something away from me. I but uh all right, but here she is as Dory, her iconic role. And uh the first thing they do is all that shark shit, right? Yeah, right. They go visit Bruce. His name's Bruce. Do you get that reference? Yeah, right, Jaws. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Bruce the shark from Jaws. Yeah. Uh he so, was Spielberg's lawyer right guys was he that's why yeah he named this shark after his lawyer i don't remember Oops. that i just remember that was the name of the animatronic shark there you go. but um let, let's uh this is like a anonymous it's like an aa joke i, I enjoy it yeah yeah this, they don't want to eat fish fish are friends not food and they have like commandments or whatever and mm-hmm. they have to like it or steps and they have to bring fish to the meeting i i liked this whole sequence it made me laugh a lot yeah i like it did you know who the other fish were no yeah well i i i've never really recognized their voices but uh eric banna is one of them and Whoa! Then the guy i don't know his name but he's the gyro captain. same year as hulk by the way that's right same year as hulk the gyro captain from from that Matt, that second Mad Max movie I just watched, he's the other. Oh, guy. okay. Whatever his name is, Spence. Is that right? I have no idea. Something um, Spence. Bruce Spence. All right. So meanwhile, Nemo, he's over in a dentist's office. Right. I love the setup of the dentist's office. How about the Buzz Lightyear toy? Did you see that? Yeah, I've always known about that. All right. Well, I just noticed it for the first time. Oh. Um, and. Who are the fish in this uh, tank with them? Well, we got Gil. I actually wrote him Who's down. That? We got Gil. Which one's that? That's Defoe. That's Willem. Okay. Willem. Gillum Defoe. We've got Bloat. Do you like Bloat? Brad Garrett. I, I'm a. He, listen, he's the Lawrence Fishburne looking fish. I'm I'm into Brad Garrett lately. I've got. <laughs> I've okay. seen him pop up in a few things. He was on that new Pete Davidson show. And I think my new thing is I'm a fan of Brad Garrett. So much so that probably 10 minutes from my home, Logan, here in beautiful, fabulous Las Vegas, there's um, 
the Brad Garrett Comedy Club. Wow. All right. He owns a comedy club down here and books it. And uh, maybe I'll go see Brad Garrett live. How about that? All right. Would that be a fun thing for me to do? You have got to be the judge of that. You're the big fan. I think so, though. As long as Ellen's not the judge, am I right? Yeah. 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 Great job. Thank you. Uh, we, the other famous people, Stephen Root played Bubbles. He's the guy that's obsessed with the Bubbles, I think. Double, yeah, two news radio regulars in this one fish else. tank. Oh, yeah, that that's true. And then uh, Allison Janney, the other famous person, plays Peach. But who's the other news radio person? Allison Janney. No, it's out. Al- it's uh the uh the uh Vicky Lewis. Yeah, right. She's the uh she has the two personalities. So she's famous to me. Right. I like her. <laughs> I like her too. I had a crush on her as a kid. But um what uh who do we got? So Allison Janney, she's this like a starfish or something. Right. Yeah. She's and there's cool. and there's like a French guy floating around too. Mm-hmm. Cleaning everything. Yeah. Oh, and there's a bird, right? A pelican that sort of hangs out by the window sometimes. Nigel. Yeah, that's Jeffrey Rush, right? Yes. Man, what a cast. Yeah. You know, it uh, Pixar always has interesting cast because they they are all famous people. But they're it's not I feel like now like Super Mario Brothers, I was looking at the cast of that and it's just like Chris Pratt and Jack Black. It's just like all like the Anya most Taylor Joy. Yeah, yeah. It's just anyone who's like currently famous. Um but uh you know, I feel like Pixar, I've said this before on the podcast, but they yeah. really like cast characters. Yeah, absolutely. I, th- I think that one of the best examples is Craig T. Nelson. I think, and Holly Hunter. I think, I just love The Incredibles. I think. And Ed Asner in Up. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Michael Keaton as Ken. That's a great one. That's a great one, too. Yeah. Great one, great one. You're right. uh, but yeah, I mean, I agree. And of course, everyone's favorite. Uh! <gasps> Tim Allen. Yeah. I mean, he is great. Yeah. All right. What do we got next? T- t- walk me through the rest of the movie. Turtles. Oh, oh I wanted to bring something up. I think it's a little bit convenient how they find the mask. They're just like hanging out with the sharks and they're like, oh, the mask that dropped out of the boat is down here. That's cool. It, Yeah, it is. It is convenient. convenient. But they haven't gone very far from the site, so it sort of makes sense. And it lets them go to, like, the bottom of the sea where there's crazy creatures. I I love bottom of the sea creatures, dude. Yeah. There's one. There's a fish down there, Logan, that sucks the blood of other fish. And do you know what scientists call it? No. Vampirus toothus. I, I don't know. I was going to say like Vampiro or something. but Vampirus Toothus. That's a real fish. Yeah. I didn't know about that. That's terrifying. I'm probably never going to go in the ocean again. That fucking kicks ass. Like the ocean rules, dude. Like I, I was watching Finding Nemo thinking not enough movies take place under the ocean. Yeah. Well, are you going to go see the new Little Mermaid? I guess not. I feel like you can't talk shit unless you're going to go watch that movie. You're right. You're right. But like, you know what? I was thinking like that movie Underwater or The Meg. Like mm. there should be more movies where like there's there's like uh, science labs under the sea. <laughs> I'm, I agree. We don't yeah. have enough of them. I, I think that's a good idea. Get on that, Hollywood. Um, I guess uh, Aquaman. That's one. That's true. Yeah. That's December, right? Aquaman 2, The Legend of the Ten Realms. I just made that up. Yeah, I just started liking Jason Momoa, so they can start getting <laughs> me to hate him again. That's right true. Away. That's yeah. true. Um, all right, so is the fish, I mean the turtles, before or after the jellyfish? Definitely before. Okay. So we meet the turtles, and uh, I always liked this turtle part. Yeah. I-, I don't know about you, and I was surprised to find out that the main turtle, Crush, yep. um, was voiced by the director. Because <laughs> I'm usually very anti this. Edna Mode. Brad yeah, Bird. yes, I was anti Edna Mode for sure. Brad Bird doing the voice of that. I read that um, he just put it in as a temp track 
And then they were doing like test screenings and the, the turtle was scoring really high on the test screenings. So they left it alone. Okay. Um, who would, if you weren't going to have the director, who would you have play this role? Because I have an amazing replacement. Jack Black. No, check this out. Why do you ask me and then you just completely turn down what I have to well, say? Well, I thought maybe you'd say the right answer. Oh, okay. So you already had the right answer. Yeah. Gotcha. Who is it? This would have been an amazing comeback vehicle for the weasel, Pauly Shore. Honestly? Yeah, that is the right choice. I fucked that, up. That, that's the right, that's the right pick. He would have fucking nailed this. Yeah, that's a great that's a great job. Oh. I don't know it's why. A shame. It is a shame. Why is no one hiring Polly Shore for stuff? Is he all right? Does he like? Did he like go off the deep end or anything? I don't know. He's a maniac, I guess. But like, he still exists, right? I, like, I have no there, idea. There's all this reevaluation going on. Like for a long time, critics hated Adam Sandler, right? But then he won like that that award like the kennedy center honor for comedy or whatever <laughs> like and everyone looks at like billy madison and happy gilmore now they're comedy classics all right why has the same thing not been done for Polly shore maybe they're just not as good i would argue they're amazing yeah i mean i don't know i haven't seen enough of them to i mean i saw well the you one just saw just your watched. first Polly shore movie but uh you watched encino, encino man, man yep. and you loved it I would say that. I, gave it to that. I liked it. I thought it was good. But he, I thought Brendan Fraser was the best part. But but I was impressed. Like, I really loved his voice. I think you're right about the voice part. He would have been great, especially for this type of character where he's like sort of like a stoner type guy. Yeah. He should have voice roles because he yes. probably looks weird now. Like, looking at Pauly Shore as like a 50 something year old man would probably be weird. But sure. I'm sure he still sounds the same. I've heard him on podcasts. I can confirm. Yeah, it's a that's a great choice. Thank great you. Great job. Okay, so what's next? I don't know. Probably go Ch- back to what they're doing. Oh, don't they initiate him into like your shark bait? Wah, right? Yeah, I've never been a big fan of that. Yeah, me either. But they have to like you have to know that like they all get along and like him. I guess. I guess so. Yeah, I think that's why it's there. Right. I guess like when they send them on that mission to like un. To, to you know to make the fish tank gross or whatever mm-hmm. like you have to know they're not like sending him on like a suicide it, mission. right <laughs> like, exactly yeah like they they like him they want him to survive here yes definitely yeah all right so um uh after the turtles there's jellyfish uh, jellyfish are, are beautiful so that's that at uh, the animation on that part's great yeah but that's probably one of the most boring parts I agree. I agree. The, all the bouncing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's all right. just okay. Yeah. Although, but that's like the first time like Marlon gets out of the the jellyfish and goes back in for Dory. Yeah, it's when you... Yeah, right. I guess it is like a good uh, character turn where he's really starting to care for her. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. For sure. Did you think they were going to go a little romance route between them at some point? No. I was five I... years old when I saw that movie. <laughs> I think I expected them to hook up. Yeah, well, you're a weirdo. You're like, they're weirdo. gonna be Nemo's new parents. But then, later in the movie, like, you see them at the end. He's still not at... even with anybody. He never, like, remarried after... Or I guess I'm... it's, like, the same... They never jump time, do they? It's sort of, like, right after Nemo. Yeah, yeah. Never no, he, he's a widow. But we see, like, their living situation, and it's like... Like, Dory's just living in a little thing near the anemone. Right. It's not like they're sleeping together. What if it's because he he feels like he's so tempted he has to kick her out and make her go over there cuz if she if she was any closer <laughs> it would it would ruin the whole dynamic maybe. Maybe it's like a 51st date situation and he feels like <laughs> he's like taking advantage of her if oh he romances God, I never thought her. About that. <laughs> that's that's genius. What if they are hooking up all the time? She just never remembers so she always goes to sleep out there. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Marlon and Dory have been hooking up every day forever. It's just fifty first dates. Yeah, man. That's hilarious, Daniel. That's a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Wow. Um hey, you know what part I like? What? All I of like that part. The school of fish that's John Ratzenberger. The school of f- Yeah, that's before the jellyfish, right? 
Oh, that is? Yeah, because they tell them, like, go through the thing, not over it, and then they go over it and run to the jellyfish. That made me laugh a lot. Their impression of Marlon. (laughs) Yeah, doing the, like, (laughs) Yeah, that's that's great. That's super fucking funny. So funny. Uh, All right, so uh, what they, what happens next? I don't know. Uh, What happens next? I don't know. Honestly, I didn't really, it's more just, like, back and forth in this, in this movie. They, they do the thing, right? They go through and they get the cage dirty, or the tank dirty. Yeah, I mean, but don't doesn't the doctor get like a new purifier? So well, yeah, they get it dirty, but then he they go to sleep, and the next morning he had already fixed right, it. Right, right. Yeah, and then so they get they get Nemo out of the tank, and then uh, are we already at the end? Like the go to the toilet flush and all that. Yeah, I like that. A, I like that it takes place in Australia. That adds something interesting to to me, mm-hmm. and. uh Oh, if they showed a toilet flush, it would have gone the other direction. Logan. Oh, I think they do show a toilet flush. I didn't really, I didn't think about it if it was going the other direction. I didn't either. But, but I'm pretty sure they do been. show it. Yeah. Attention to detail. But uh, they're going to just pop him in the garbage, right? Yeah, it's it seemed that way at first. But I, I do want to bring something up. Have you, I mean, I guess you were like an adult kind of, not an adult, but you were like in your teens at this point. I was like 16. 16. Um, because I, I definitely had fish growing up, and I, I definitely flushed them down the toilet when they were dead. Did you I think? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I I don't I don't want to come on here and say that, and then you'd be like, "What? You're an animal." So that's good. No, no. That's I had, how it goes. I had fish. Uh, I had a couple goldfish. Mm-hmm. I had a couple hermit crabs, and uh, my sister had a Japanese fighting fish named ringo starfish i remember that's that great. yeah i named him after lord of the rings characters what a fucking nerd so i had like a strider and a, G- a gimli and stuff like that. <laughs> not even joking i was a big loser what, did you have um what well, didn't Gollum have a friend named scollum or something no come on it's smeagol and deagle <laughs> that's right <laughs> Gollum and scollum oh my god <laughs> oh god all right um uh, where were we? Uh, the toilet. The toilet, right? And the baggies. Yeah, they they show up in the. Win- oh, that's another thing that they run into the bird, right? The bird takes them to the to Dory and Marlin takes them to the place. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Dory and Marlin run into the bird, and the bird knows Nemo from that window. Right. That's right. Yeah. And and by and the whole story had been getting around the whole ocean at this point, like. Because they, they told the turtles, and then the turtles told other people, and they told other people. So, like, the whole story had been getting around about this dad going to find Nemo, and so it's a big deal. That seems crazy to me. Like, if yeah. I was... I love that scene. If I was a fish, and somebody told me that story, I wouldn't give a shit. No, I, I love it. I think it's, like, really heroic, and, like, the music, <laughs> and you see all the transitions of, like, the swordfish fighting, and they're, like, telling the story, and then, like, the crabs. I think it's great. It's one of my favorite I'd parts. be like, bro... That's a boring story. You had me at <laughs> boat. Like, that's interesting. But you think they're still saying but? Like, or do you think somebody corrected it at some point? Well, like, only the kids are saying but. I think the adults know that it's a boat. All right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. They, you know, happy, uh, happily ever after. What, what do you give this movie? Well, I'm not done. I want to bring up oh. one thing. At the very okay. end, when they all, they're like, well, you have to swim down. Swim down. You know, when they're in the net. You know that part? Yes. Afterward, then they all escape the net, and and Nemo is hurt under the net, and they're like, "Oh no, Nemo's hurt." Nemo's the only fish that got hurt. I think that's pretty funny. Like the the yeah. shot of the net, and then Nemo's like the one fish out of the hundreds that got like he's the one fish that got hurt. A lot, a lot of conveniences hey, in this movie. I just you think. know who else escaped the net? Who? Sandra Bullock. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> yeah great job. Thank you. All right, you have any other stuff? Not really. All right, uh, out of a five. Oh, with the get? whale. We didn't talk about the whale. They're in the whale. Oh yeah, you like that? Um, well, a serious and, moment. And this is when, like, Dory, she's making whale noises, right? <laughs> yeah. And then we learn in the next movie why she's able to do that. Yep, I was wondering. How I was does too. she know that? Right. 
Well, it's all explained in Finding Dory. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo and you were wondering that and you haven't seen Finding Dory, have I got the movie for you? Yeah, what are you even doing at this at this point? And if well, you saw Finding Dory and you have questions about what happened what happened previously, uh who cares? Cuz you already <laughs> watched Finding Dory and that's that you already got your answers about Dory. Yeah, bro. That's the only character that matters. What what else? Uh I guess that's it. You don't have anything from the way. No. All right. I give it a four. Me too. I can't go five. It's a, it's a little. But dis- I think it's close. Like it. it this yeah. is a classic, man. Absolutely. Like, kids should watch this movie forever. Like when I was a kid, I watched the fuck out of like Pinocchio, which came out in 1940 and like Snow White from like 39 or something, 38 maybe. And, uh, this is one of those movies. Like, this is going to stand the test of time. There's going to be kids in, like, the year 2100 still watching Finding Nemo. Yeah, I think that, like, the top three animated movies that is, are going to live on forever are Toy Story, this, and The Lion King. What do you think about that? I love those choices. Wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And... Yeah. Incredibles 2. <laughs> <laughs> the Mount Rushmore. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe Aladdin? No way. You don't think so? No. I haven't seen I Aladdin. Get, yeah, it's got a lot of pop old. culture references. But then you just watch the new one. It's better anyway. What? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh my god. You scared the shit out of me. Uh, Alright. Um, Maybe Wreck-It we'll, Ralph. You ever see Wreck-It Ralph? Shut the fuck up. That's a great one. You haven't even seen it, I don't think. Yeah, but that's not going to stand the test of time. No, you're right. But it, that's a great movie, honestly. Five-star masterpiece. I guess so. All right. I am. Well, we should cover it, right? There's a sequel to that. He broke the internet. He absolutely did. You won't even believe how. I'm not going to tell you either, so don't ask. Don't even bother asking me. Literally, the only thing I know about those movies is it involves video games and Sarah Silverman's in it. You don't know who played Ralph? John C. Riley? Yeah, John C. Riley. Okay, I know that too. Yep. All right. Um, who's your MVP in Finding Nemo? Got to be. I wrote down two names, but I think really you can only go one name. I wrote down Defoe, and I wrote down Brooks. Wow, the you two go contenders Brooks. for the role of Marlin. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you got to go Brooks. They got it right. I, I think Brooks they did. As well. Yeah. Brooks gives such a lived-in performance. Like, you really only care about any of these fish because Albert Brooks is so goddamn good in this movie. Great. That, that, that's the great point. The, yeah, that's it. You just you just hit it. He's the center of the movie. Yeah. You don't care about anybody without him. Absolutely. And who's the LVP of Finding Nemo? Well, L for a reason. L and DeGeneres. Oh, my God. You're straight up going Dory LVP? She's just the one who, anytime she had to deliver anything emotional, I did not buy it for a second. Bro, that is outrageous. What are you, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm looking at the cast right now. but I thought that, everyone else was really good. That doesn't seem possible to me. What are you going to do? I, I mean, I thought about it. I thought about, like, Squirt because it's Bird's kid, but I love Squirt. I think Squirt's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, the sharks are good. The dentist... Darla. Jeffrey Rush or Jeffrey Wright, whichever one he is, I forget all the time. Jeffrey Rush. Jeffrey Wright's a black fella. Oh, um, <laughs> all right, he's from the Batman, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I uh I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable going, Ellen. What are you gonna do? It's like it's like a Buffy episode where everybody's good. You don't know who to go with, so you're like, uh <laughs> Stop Giles. A Buffy on the main show. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just watched an episode this morning. I know, one of the best episodes. Really? Well. In my opinion. Okay. We'll talk about it in two days, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um how about what do you got? Maybe who's Gurgle? I don't know. There, I'm going with Gurgle. What? Look, 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 <laughs> look up Gurgle at least. Who voiced Gurgle? Austin Pendleton. Who the fuck's Austin Pendleton? I've heard that Exactly. Name, He's in the fucking tank, but nobody remembers who he is. I'm telling you. He's oh, I a like little, Gurgle. He's, he's a little cute. purple guy. I'm going to go with Gurgle. Yeah, do you, can you see Gurgle? Yeah, 
<laughs> I was looking at him on my own phone, but oh. thank you. Yeah. He's cute. I like Gurgle. But whatever. So Gurgle versus Ellen. Let me know who got it right. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's talk about Dory, huh? Yeah, let's do it. So they, your least favorite character in Finding Nemo, they're like, let's make a whole movie about her. Exactly. And that's sort of the problem with this movie, in my opinion. Mm. Okay. Uh, Andrew Stanton, back to write and direct. He he has little co-guys in this one, though. Victoria Strauss is his co-writer. I don't know where the fuck he dug this lady out from. She's like a TV staff writer. The last thing she had worked on was 2008. She wrote a few episodes of October Sky. All right, you know what which, she's got upcoming. Which I don't. What? Oh, to Tinkerbell. I read that. Yes. Yeah. With. But, you know what I'm about to say or no? No. A previous screenplay from Buffy's own Marty Noxon. <laughs> wow. Pretty cool, right? Marty, you, Marty, you Rota cannot Tinkerbell. stop talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Well, that's just something I should have not brought up. We're co- like, <laughs> no, no, it's it's good. Yeah, I Marty Noxon. Cool. The writer of the episode you watched this morning. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, October Sky was this like, it c- canceled after two seasons J.J. Abrams show. All right. Okay. And it, Laura Prepon, I believe, was the lead of it. Okay. With blonde hair for no reason. Okay. Um, That's and Donna, right? Donna. Yeah. Donna Pinciotti. Right. <laughs> the co-director is Angus McLean, who later directed the worst Pixar movie of all time, Lightyear. Yeah. I think um, that's our worst episode, maybe. It's that, Jurassic World Dominion, and something else. We did three things that I w- did not enjoy for a second. But you always think, like, the episodes where we talk shit are our worst episodes. I think they're our best ones. But, uh, but I was just bored, I feel like. Like, there was nothing. Well, that's on here. you, man. Go back and listen to that episode. Logan sucks, but I'm fucking <laughs> in. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I guess I was just, I was just, I was bad. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. You're doing great today. Thanks. All right. Uh, we've uh, $200 million was the budget for this. They more than doubled the budget of the first one, but don't even worry about it. It made $1.029 billion Whoa. at the box office. Again, the number two movie of the year between uh, Rogue One mm. and uh, Civil War, Captain America Civil War. Yep. All right. Uh, go through some of the awards. No Oscar noms. Didn't even get nominated for an Oscar. How about that? That's crazy. You, best. Really? They yeah. always get nominated, Pixar. I know. They usually win. They, didn't even they get nominated. shunned this one. That's crazy. Let, let's see. I'm going to look it up. 2017 Oscars. What was oh, this was actually a big year, show? wasn't it? This was like, I remember they had, um, it was like Moana and Zootopia and it's not Moana. Moana was like 2012. What are you talking about? Wasn't it Moana? <laughs> am I wrong about this? You're a crazy. Person. No, I am wrong about this. Okay, Mo- it was yeah. Moana, Zootopia, and Kubo and the Two Strings. Though I remember those were all big animated movies that year that yeah. nobody knew what was going to win. Can you name the other two nominations? No, that's all I got. My Life as a Zucchini. Okay, <laughs> never heard of that and the red something i lost track hang on all right so it is kind of crazy this turtle so it is crazy this didn't get nominated still in not nominated spots. but uh the bath is nominated but it lost to kubo and the and and both strings and uh the people's choice awards they loved it the people love it best movie best uh voice or whatever ellen um Kids' Choice, Best Animated, Best Ellen. Saturn Awards, Best Animated. Teen Choice, Best Comedy and Best Comedy Actress, Ellen. All right? People wow. loved Ellen. All over the place. Yeah. and But how about this? The Image Awards. Remember I told you about the Image Awards? No. <laughs> the Image Awards? <laughs> yeah, dude. Do we have a theme song? We should get a theme song. We should. T- you should text Henry, ask him for an Image Awards I, theme song. Oh, my God. It would be so offensive. But the, <laughs> the Image Awards are um, are the awards. It's just black people are eligible. Oh. All right? 
or uh, maybe just people of color. So I, I talked about this a while back as we were covering something, maybe the best man that was nominated for like a bunch of image awards. That's the one black thing we ever covered. <laughs> that's not true. We've covered other shit. True. That, we covered Friday. Oh, not me. I was talking about me. Oh, yeah. oh you. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had to whiten up the show since you got here. Right. Barbershop, uh, is that a black thing? Of course it is. We gotta do that. There's only one the white guy, and there's a token white guy in the cast. Who's that? Uh, I don't remember who plays him. You guys didn't even do Black Panther. Or we didn't, I guess. Because that second one came out when I was doing it. Yeah. Anyway, keep going, keep going. All right. Uh, image Awards, I noticed that this was nominated for an Image Award. Mm-hmm. Okay. Idris Elba who plays one of the sea lions in this film. Mm-hmm. Both both sea lions, by the way, played by wire actors. Idris Elba, who played Stringer Bell, of course, and Dominic West, Detective Jimmy McNulty. Okay. But Idris, he was nominated for Best Voice in an Animated Movie, and he lost the Image Award. Do you want to know who won? M- Martin Sheen. It's only black people. Oh, yeah, I forgot about I'll... that. Uh, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. No, how about this? Idris Elba for his work in The Jungle Book. Oh, my God. Why? There, nothing came out that year? It's all... You don't know... It's, it's only black people eligible. That's all they had. They were just Idris Elba voicing animated people. He's not even that great. But people love Idris Elba. All right. All right, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you the noms. Okay. You ready? Yep. The 2017 NAACP Image Awards. That's the National Association of... <laughs> I forget. Something colored people, I think. The advancement of colored yes, people. Yes. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was being uh, you know, offensive saying that, but that's actually what it stands for. Yeah. Um, uh, so... Animated. Here we go. It, the other nominations that year were Loretta Devine for Doc McStuffins, Kevin. Oh, you know who should have won? Uh, we here. Kevin Hart for The Secret Life of Pets. But the the person that's surprising didn't win was Dwayne Johnson for Moana. Mm, that is surprising. Yeah, Why didn't he win? Not black enough for the Image Awards. Mm. He'll win for when they redo Moana. You know about that? They're doing a live action Moana. Live action Moana. Oh my god! They should great. just get that same girl to play Moana again. I think yeah, you know, I think they're getting somebody else. Oh, all right. Yeah, she might be too old now. But they're doing it with The Rock. He's doing it again. He's gotta be right. Yeah. That that's perfect. They should get Roman Reigns involved in that. <laughs> and the Usos. All right. Um. Oh, I guess we should talk about the movie, huh? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean... Tell me about it. I gotta tell you about it. She. Go- I'll tell you something. The best thing this movie does, but also the worst thing this movie does, is it, it puts you in Dory's POV, where you you also don't know how she went missing, right? Like, yeah. Like, so it starts out, she's at home, and then she's just with nemo and marlin and you're like how did that happen so you also don't know but then that is sort of the problem with this movie because then it does like 15 flashbacks and you're like oh you got to see the undertow again and you got to learn this little detail and this little detail and this so it's a good thing about this movie that you also don't know what happened which is like a cool way to like narratively structure the movie i think but it's a problem because i don't like any of the flashbacks I don't mind it. I gotta say, I'm probably gonna come out a little higher on Finding Dory than you. Okay. Like I, Dory does annoy me, and I remember when this movie was announced, thinking like, "Oh, my least favorite Finding Nemo character." They're making a movie about her, but like as a movie in itself, I'm like invested the whole way through. Like I want Dory to find her parents. And Had you seen this before? I had, yeah, had just just it. once, like right around when it came out. Okay, um, and I thought that I think the world they set up of that that uh, animal sanctuary or wherever they are is really interesting. I think there's a lot of fun supporting characters, just as many as were in the original Finding Nemo, and uh, 
and I, I, I don't know. I just care about it, and it makes me laugh a lot. It goes off the rails by the end, but as a sequel, like they could have done a lot fucking worse than this. Yeah, they could have. They definitely could have. They could have made it about uh, uh, the mom that died, and then you wouldn't have a movie at all because she's dead, right? That would have probably been worse. Probably. Well, that, that might have been interesting, though, a film about the fish afterlife. You do love the show Ghosts, so you probably <laughs> would have enjoyed about the ghost fish. I love You think I love ghosts now just because I watched that one fucking show about ghosts. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I don't know. I... I didn't really think it was that funny that much. I, I, I like think it's funny, dude. Really? Dude, this, like- the stuff with Ty Burrell as a beluga whale and when, ooh, when he's doing the echolocation, that made me laugh every time to the point where like, I started feeling stupid that it made me laugh every time. So a couple times I tried not to laugh when he did it and I still laugh. That's funny. I didn't see. I, I didn't like that because that's during the whole like truck race scene, and I just find that all really boring. I want the movie to end at that point. She found no, her I, parents. Now we're doing an extra. It's not all got, during that though, they set it up earlier. But like, that's like when he learns how to do it. That's when he's no. Like, really he's, doing when it. he finds them in the quarantine, that's when he learns how to do it. Okay. And he's like teaching Dory how to like where how to go through the pipe. Like, oh, you're going to run into someone, and it's it's Marlon? I guess you're right. I, yeah. I guess, sorry, I guess you're right about that. All but, that shit. Yeah, I own it. I fucked up. But I don't know. I, th- I thought he was okay. I thought uh, D from... By the way, lots of uh, Modern Family. Uh, Hank also from Modern Family, too. Yeah. Modern Family, the, Modern Family is the news radio of, of Finding Dory. That's funny. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, thought, I actually thought he was funnier, Hank. Ed O'Neill is great, and and that's the breakout character of the movie. Like on it, Finding Dory, finding whatever. Hank. Finding Hank is the real star of the movie. Yeah, that'll be the that'll be the next one. We got. I would be into it. I I related to Hank. Hank was like, "You don't want to be in this box. Put me in the box. I'll go live off by myself in the little box. That sounds fun." I laughed a lot at his little camouflages too. Yeah. Me too. Me when too. he like camouflaged with that like uh, the cat, yeah, that was good. But the banister, the banister. Oh yeah, there's one where he's like he. You think he's a Dory? Yeah. Right? And the, oh, that was good. Yeah, that was so cool. And there's one where he makes himself a potted plant. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. Lots of cool yeah. They do a lot with that. Is that, that a thing bit. octopuses do? Octopi? It's octopi, but Sorry. yeah, yeah. They they uh, some of them, not all of them, but some of them have that. Sp- that ability but uh octopi are of course one of the smartest um animals in the undersea kingdom and uh they can open jars yeah they sure can better than me i tried opening a jar the other day couldn't even fucking do it i know sometimes it's not a joke sometimes i'm trying to put jelly on my bagel logan and i'm like i wish i had an octopus here (laughs) you go jelly you don't like uh like a a cream cheese or whatever? I, I, I do. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I've literally never put jelly on a bagel. Oh, you I, cream I, I, that was just a bit. Yeah, cream cheese like, on a bagel. Very good. Yeah, no, I, it's always cream cheese, man. Yeah. or And maybe a little lox. All right, I don't even know what that is. Well, I'm but, Jewish. All right, but... I forgot what we were talking about, to be honest. But <laughs> uh, the jelly thing. I'm thinking about the jelly. Which favorite kind of jelly? I um, like grape raspberry raspberry i think like the two choices people go to grape strawberry you went off the board completely that's i like strawberry too of course jams are good well you say jam you look all fancy and jam i'm from new york i say jam wait what do you say we were, we were talking the same jelly the whole time oh, and then jam. you're like oh jam's so good yeah you like correct me that i was i didn't even jelly. think about it dude i wasn't trying to be an asshole that's all right it happens all the time <laughs> It happens all the time. <laughs> not, not all, often. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, so what? Give me more. Uh, Sigourney Weaver. You like yeah. That joke. I kind of do. That's yeah, all right. Like I remember, I remember the first time I saw the movie. Like the first time they say Sigourney Weaver. Like it's like, hi, I'm Sigourney Weaver. I was like, oh, that's so like. 
that's not what Pixar does, you know? Like, Pixar is not about, like, getting some celeb to, like, play themselves in something. But it kind of does make sense in the context of the movie. And the more they use it, I think the funnier it gets. Yeah, and I feel like she always says, like, I'm Sigourney Weaver, which, which is very yeah, funny. Like, yeah. She always has to introduce who she is, which doesn't make sense, but it's very funny. Maybe, maybe I made that up. Maybe she doesn't even do that. But, yeah, I, I have no problem with that. Did you like the bird? I enjoyed the think, bird wait, character. Wait, Becky? Do you th- can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think they got Sigourney Weaver because she's a real queen of the of the sea because of Avatar now? No, I don't think that's why. But it's Disney. They own both. I don't think that the Avatar... She's like the f- fifth, sixth lead in Avatar. Well, I haven't seen uh, The Way of Water. Well, she's like the eighth lead of that Avatar, ninth lead of that Avatar. What number is Spider? S- seven. <laughs> He's ahead of her, I would say. All right, got it. Yeah. All right, what were you going to say? I forgot. Damn it. Sorry. Where were we? Oh, b- Bill the Bird, Becky the Bird. That's a funny bird. I like Becky the Bird. Becky the Bird's a cool That's bird. a good bit. Yeah, when they're in that bucket on the tree. And I like when they're in that fish tank and they're like, what would Dory do? And then they jump across oh, I the hate thing. That. Well, I hate you, what what, you don't do. like that? What would Dory do is so stupid. Why? So dumb. I feel like Dory was his hero that saved the day in the, in the first one. Now we're doing what would Dory do? Well, it's because he feels bad about what he said to Dory earlier. Like, why don't you just forget about it? It's what you do best anyway. Yeah. I mean, I understand why he's doing it, but I, I don't know. It seems a little forced to me. Now, this is the Dory movie, so Dory's the hero. Of, I, I guess. Don't know. If I was Marlon, like, I could never handle Dory. I would get frustrated with her constantly. Yeah. Well, that's why every day is in a reset. It's a, It's that's why the, the dynamic's cool. She doesn't remember anything. Yeah, I guess. You can really treat her like shit, huh? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea. Oh, my God. All right, what else? I don't know. What happened? Well, give me more Dory. Uh, the, the, what about the, the, the touch pool? What's that? Oh, when they, oh, yeah, that's all right. You ever go to the, one of those in an aquarium as a kid? Barely? Like, maybe? I very distinctly remember going to one of those and like touching on a starfish and being like, oh my God, that's what a starfish feels like. Yeah, I don't know. Really so, so they have one of those in this movie and I love it. Like the the villain is kids' hands. Kids it remi- are gross. It reminded me of the part in Toy Story 3 where they're all just playing with them, but they're all villains. Yeah. Like they're just playing with them how kids play with them, but to the toys, they're, they're all villains. It was right. basically that same sequence, it feel like. The kindergarten. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, Dory's from the... I think the, it's called the, the caterpillar room. And yeah, I think you're right. the butterfly room. Yeah, you're right. But it's the open ocean. That that whole section. Hey, how about the thing with the shells? Nah, bored me. What? So much of the shells. My mom likes the purple. The, all the shells. But the, the final shells. reveal that like the parents were released back into the ocean and they just sort of like hang around right where they were released and put shell they spend every day building shells in all different directions yeah it's it's sweet but but we just talked like i I really got annoyed by the flashbacks like i felt like there were so many flashbacks and it took away from kind of any parts i was enjoying enjoying from the main movie and so i just didn't think baby dory was cute She's very cute. She's definitely cute. But it by by the end I was just too bored by it to enjoy any of it. I felt like I never I got to say I never felt bored watching the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was engaged at all times. Okay. Fair enough. I was. Fair I was, man. The truck, I mean there's there's times I'm watching and I'm like, "Oh, this is stupid. This strains credulity." Mm-hmm. But um but I can't say I was ever bored. I have a little complaint about the truck. They're doing the whole truck thing, and yeah. they see a boat. They're like, which way is the ocean? Which way is the ocean? And they they see a boat drive by, and like, oh, that that what must be where the ocean is. But if there's a boat attached to a truck, then there's that's only a 50% chance that that's headed to the ocean. The yeah, other 50% could be going chance home. is it's headed home. 
right yeah so very very, these movies are very coincidental that's all i'm saying but that was just another instance where i I mean they do some shit in this truck that would make dom toretto blush (laughs) that's funny yeah yeah you're right yeah it's Uh, ridiculous yeah but what about all the otter stuff that's cute it's cute but cuddle party cuddle party that's great it's fine (laughs) cuddle party yeah. Oh. Uh, Did you know who the parents were? No. Oh well, I recognize Eugene Levy. Who is the mom? Uh, Elizabeth. Uh, what's her last name? Perkins. Oh, really? El- no, Diane Keaton. I was just kidding. <laughs> what the fuck? Elizabeth Perkins was the mom in the first movie. I think. <laughs> oh, okay. She was. Oh, Diane Keaton. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. From your favorite movie. What Annie Hall? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she played the titular Annie Hall. But she should have said, la di da, la di da. La di, yeah, that's right. Yeah. There should have been a funny sequence where she's trying to catch a lobster in this movie. I'm, You know what I'm glad about is, oh, that's funny. Yeah. That was a great joke. <laughs> that, just, like, that is, no, that is a great joke. It just took me a second. Damn it. Because uh, I was thinking about this great joke. Um, well, it's not even a joke. It's more an observation, Logan. I'm glad that uh, Eugene Levy's annoying, untalented son never showed up in this movie. Yeah, who is that, Dan? Yeah, Dan Levy, one of our worst Dans. Yeah, I don't really know much about him. Uh, Shit's Creek. Yeah. All right. Um, He's got the eyebrows, though, right? Yeah. Pretty thick really eyebrows. Hanging on to that, yeah. All right. Uh, what, you got anything else? Not really. All right, Hopefully. listen. Finding Dory is a solid sequel. To oh, Finding I feel like they Dory. didn't know how to end it. How does it end? It ends, they like, Dory goes to the drop off with Nemo or with Marlin. Marlin's like following her, making sure she doesn't get lost. But she doesn't get lost. And she's like, they're just looking off at the drop. Remember the drop off from the first movie yeah. where Nemo goes missing? They're looking, just like looking into the distance. And they're like, wow, what a view. It's really unforgettable. Wow. unforgettable and then it ends and then she like forgets a, everything yeah and then there's a sia song that plays at the end called unforgettable well, it's catch not, that one? it's a cover of the classic nat king cole song by sia yeah oh i obviously didn't know that because i'm a dum-dum so are I, you serious you thought that song was a sia original well, I, t- I didn't listen to the whole thing i turned it off after but i heard sia like belching unforgettable and i was like <laughs> belching i didn't know i didn't think it was a i didn't know but yeah, I mean that's how I thought it was a weak ending. I thought they really didn't know how to end it. It was a little weak. I, 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 I know what you mean. Only because I remember when the end popped up on the screen, I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I do love how they end these movies. It says the end in that cute little font with the ocean. It's very beautiful. The yeah. same way the first movie ends too. For sure. What do you go? What are you gonna give this one? <sighs> Between a two and a three, for sure. Right. I didn't hate it, definitely. Enjoyed parts of it, for sure, right? Um, I feel like I'll go three. I think it's a solid three. Yeah. You, def- you definitely enjoyed it more than, more than I did. Yeah, yeah. Who's you your MVP? You think it's better than, what? like, Good Dinosaur? Yes. Yeah, I feel like it's, like, barely better than that movie. It's, like, on that tier, Good Dinosaur. No, I think it's much better than Good Dinosaur. Really? Yeah. Here, let's see. Let's see where I put it. I have a Pixar I, ranking. I do too, somewhere. I haven't updated it in a, in a little bit, but um, oh, I've got it. Pixar. I've got Dory. I do have it 16 out of 21. It's not great. I've got it ahead of Toy Story 4. I've got it ahead of Onward. I've got it ahead of Bugs Life, and I've got it ahead of Cars. See, I, I I put it between Onward and Brave, so I guess I have it a little above. I have it 22 out of 26. Like, to me, look. Look at this tier. How many did you I, have? 21. What? You're missing a lot. I have 26. Well, I haven't seen Brave. Cars. I, I haven't seen Cars 2 and 3. Luca? I've seen that. Turning Red? I've seen that. Oh. What are you missing then? That's crazy. Maybe you just haven't put some. Oh, Monsters U. Yeah, that's another one. All right, but here, look at this tier. I have at 14, 15, and 16 in a row. Incredibles 2, Toy Story 2, Finding Dory. 
I think it's I think it's on this tier with Luca onward finding Dory Brave the good dinosaur. That's a tier. <laughs> but yeah, that's all over the map for like I think Luca's way better than than some of the ones you just said. But you watched it for a podcast and I didn't. I watched it a second time, I think, for a podcast. So you saw oh, it twice. Maybe, I saw wait, it maybe once. Not. All right, maybe if well, I saw whatever. it twice, I'd like That's it more. A, that movie's good as hell. Yeah, I, I thought it was just okay. You know what I didn't like? I didn't like the voice actors. They bothered me. The voice actors? It was like the kid from It and then maybe Jacob Tremblay or something. Yeah, but I like, think but, you nailed it. But they were playing like little Italian boys. I, I thought it worked. <laughs> I wasn't in that into it. I didn't really it is fine. It's fine. Anyway, so I enjoy it. Three stars. Who's no, your no MVP? Beef. No beef. MVP, I wrote down Hank. I wrote Destiny. I wrote Marlin and Baby Dory because Baby Dory is very cute. But I'm going to go Hank and yeah. O'Neal. I think Ed O'Neill's the answer. Yeah, but like Alan Iverson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Ty Burrell just because okay. I-, I was incapable of not laughing at that bit. I think you know what we have to do. What? Modern Family rewatch podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, we love them. Who knew? I, I know, didn't. Man. I watched every episode of Modern Family. That's why it's a rewatch. You've seen it all? No, definitely not, Dev. For oh, sure. Right. I've never even yeah. seen a full season. I couldn't even oh. tell you any plot points or anything. I just, I've seen a few episodes here and there. But could you? Na- how many main cast members can you name off the top of your head? Cast members? Yeah. Like all of them. Really? But, but not their character names. Oh no! Okay, I know I know the cast for sure, but but I don't know the characters. Got it. Names. All right, I, I'm not even a big fan of that show, but I guess I guess they they work well in the Pixar universe. Yeah, they they did a good job. Uh, LVP, who do you got? Because I wrote Dory, but I feel bad. Jesus Christ! Dude. I know. Uh, uh, well, hang on. I'm gonna look at the look at the the scene here. I thought everybody else was good. You go little little Nemo. He doesn't really do that much. Mm, yeah, he's cute and he's good with Marlon. He definitely sounds enough like him. You don't, you would not realize if you weren't, if you didn't pay attention. Yeah, I completely agree. Same um, with Squirt, new Squirt. Did you know that there's a post credit sequence in this movie? Nope. I didn't watch it. I only know about it because this morning I was reading, I was rereading the plot, and uh, and I came across it. What what is it? It's all of the 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 fish and baggies from the last movie. They get to the that animal sanctuary or whatever. Oh, I think there's a post credit scene in the first movie where they're all in the baggies escaping to the ocean. Really? And they get to the ocean. No, yeah. I think that's in the movie. Oh, oh, yeah. I think you're right. Because yeah. why would I have watched that as a kid? And I've seen that so many times in my life. Yeah. So it might be during the credits, maybe. Um, but yeah. So who's your LVP? Who'd you go with? I haven't gone with anybody yet. I think I might go with Dory. Is that okay? <laughs> That's what I went with. Because I kind of love this. I, I I love a lot of stuff in this movie that doesn't involve Dory. Yeah, I think all the supporting people they got are are very good. Yeah, Caitlin Olsen, Ed O'Neill, Ty Burrell, and the the sea lions are very funny to me. Yeah, they're okay. If you wanted to go a sea lion, I'd be fine with nah, that. No, they make me laugh, dude. All right. Um, maybe, you, you know Don't what I like? Don't get about- used to it when that when that dumb one gets up there. <laughs> sure. You know what I liked on the um, parent? I love how they make dad have like a receding hairline and look really. I noticed that or, too. Like, I like, like that too. Design. It's, very, yeah. it's very, I like how they design the parents. I think it's great. Yeah. I noticed that the receding hairline. Very funny. So- it's weird it's like almost like an optical illusion well um all right that's finding dory right what are we doing next week oh my god more animated stuff guys Buckle it's up. not animated that's for their their live action oh right, right, right all right listen um we're gonna be talking about four great characters next week okay one leads should we should we take turns naming them uh, one uh, one leads, one does machines, <laughs> one is rude, and one is a party dude. Is yeah. what I was gonna say. Cool but right? rude. Cool but rude. He is cool but rude. Good point. Yeah. Um, and those characters are Leonardo Leeds. Oh, am I supposed Look, to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donatello does machines. That's right. 
Raphael is cool but rude. And then Michelangelo is a real party dude. He sure is, man. He's spinning around on that shell in a disco. Um, now, I, I'm i a big TMNT guy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> they were my childhood love. They were probably the first thing in the world I was ever like obsessed with. Wow. All right, I have like a million action figures. I saw these first three movies a hundred times a piece. And, uh, and we're going to get into them. We're talking next week about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Do you know the layout? How many are there? I know. There's six of them. So next week is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Secret of the Ooze, of course. The following week, we'll do Turtles 3, a.k.a. Turtles in Time, then and TMNT, which is an, the only animated feature that came out in theaters. And then finally... Week three will be the two Michael Bays. No, uh, two of them. And then there's a new one coming out in a couple months. I Mutant think. Madness. Mutant Madness is the new animated one coming out in, I think, August. Seth Rogen's involved in yep. some way. Uh, and uh, honestly, the trailer I thought looked pretty good. I haven't seen it. <laughs> it looked all right to me. Okay. So uh, we're Seth looking Seth Rogen has a new that. movie coming out with Rose Byrne, which I'm excited for because I think they're great in the movie. Neighbors. I believe I believe it's a TV series. Oh, it's a t- oh, okay, okay. I didn't know. Yeah, that. but yeah, I think they're a great one of the great like comedic and like sort of charming couples of the last many years. I, I love them together in Neighbors. I agree. We should cover that because I kind of think Neighbors Two is an underrated movie. I never saw it really it's solid well i knew i was listening to this podcast at the time and i knew i was like one day i'm gonna take over for henry henry's gonna be gone <laughs> and so i didn't watch it at the time oh man all right i knew well we'll get to it i guess uh but yeah i'm looking forward to that show also but anyway ninja turtles they're the fucking best we'll talk about all your favorites casey jones krang shredder toka and razor super shredder bebop and rock steady Baxter Stockman, uh, Casey Jones, April O'Neil. All right. I think you already said those people. Okay. You definitely said Casey twice. Did I leave anybody else out? Anybody great? No. You got them all. My favorite Ma- Raphael. Also Mondo right Gecko. I don't know if he ever showed up in a movie, but he's a great character from the, ca- the cartoon. All right. T- TMNT next week. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be Righteous or something. Cowabunga. Cowabunga, yeah. What, yeah. What about, should we eat pizza during the podcast? Should oh, that be a good bit? Oh, man, that's a great idea Get some because pizza. they loved pizza. Yeah, and we'll record from in a sewer. Maybe that'll be... <laughs> oh, good, good. You may, I don't want to go into a sewer because it smells down there, but maybe put a little echo on my audio. Okay. Pretend I'm in a sewer. I'll add a little reverb to it. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do something like that. Uh, we're also doing something tomorrow, guys. We're going to rank... Long time coming. I've been making this list for many weeks now of be- best part twos, sequels. Oh, yeah. That's tomorrow. We're, that's going to be a big list. I've seen like 300 of them. Uh, uh, but ironically, not the second 300 movie. Um, <laughs> but, so that's tomorrow. We're ranking every part two of a franchise that we've seen. And uh, stay tuned. Patreon.com slash the franchise for much more this week that and uh buffy we're covering the the wish and amends two major eps and then uh, of course hey i'm watching here i'll tell you all about what i thought about uh 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 what i watched that love and death with elizabeth olsen i wanted to see the new nicole ended yeah succession we'll talk about the end of succession i saw the new nicole holocener movie uh you hurt my feelings so a lot coming down the pike here Ah, the franchise.